Today we present a rare case of a decentered one-piece IOL, causing subclinical EEG syndrome in a patient presenting with subconjunctival hemorrhage. The patient had not noticed visual acuity loss and no intraocular inflammation was apparent. However B-scan ultrasound indicated slight choroidal thickening suggestive of uvule inflammation, therefore the misplaced IOL had to be addressed. The first step is to fill the anterior chamber with cohesive dispersive OVD and to assess capsular bag stability. There were no reports of complications during the original FACO, but we had to carefully explore the anterior segment. OVD is directed underneath the anterior capsule with the goal of releasing the IOL. The capsular bag seems to be intact and stable. Now we will use a 27-gauge needle attached to the OVD syringe to further dissect the capsular sheath from the IOL. This is a delicate maneuver. The goal is to lift the fibrous anterior capsule with the needle and simultaneously inject OVD underneath it, to progressively release the intraocular lens. The process is repeated in the nasal side of the lens. It is readily apparent that the nasal side and haptic are more mobile. So we go back to further releasing the temporal haptic, and soon a viscoelastic wave is seen progressing behind the IOL, indicating that the capsular sheaths have been separated and the bag is now open. Patient and persistent OVD injection pays off in further expanding the bag, in order to allow subsequent IOL rotation maneuvers. Gentle pushing and rotating movements confirm that the IOL is now freely movable and that the nasal haptic was placed in the sulcus. The slowly progressive capsular bag contraction and fibrosis led to the decentration of the lens. Now we will use a chopper as a second instrument, in order to move the nasal haptic in a controlled maneuver inside the capsular bag. There it goes. The IOL is now nicely centered, but we will further work the bag by using a 25 gauge micro forceps to peel the fibrous cellular strands from underneath the anterior capsule. Peeling is slow and controlled in order to avoid creating a break in the elastic but brittle capsule. The second instrument is used again to peek underneath the iris while assessing zonular integrity. The bag is fully stable and the IOL centered. OVD is used to move and release cortical debris from the posterior capsule. Bag cleanup continues by injecting OVD and gently scraping the residual fibrous strands underneath the anterior capsule. Now passive irrigation aspiration is performed to remove the OVD beneath and over the IOL. The IOL is stable and the capsular bag is looking much better, time to hydrate the corneal side ports, as the case is now complete. There it is a simple and precise surgery with a beautiful result.